that does unfortunately take us on. I, I love how without Arrow being on, we, we one of the shows we put in the off season content was something I also hate. Just just to make me miserable all the year I think, round. I think the point is we've got to be consistent on the show. You know, uh-huh. some good stuff, some okay stuff. One thing we hate. So when Smallville's done in like twenty years' time, we'll uh, add in Gotham. Is what you're saying? That'll be the, the replacement we'll, for we'll it. We'll see what the other options are. <laughs> there'll there'll, 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 there'll be other shit before then. There'll be others by then. Um. But yeah, so Smallville season one episode eight. It's called Jitters. Uh, which actually I laugh at that a little bit because that's the name of the coffee shop in uh, in Flash. Uh, and I, I think there's one, and I think there's been one in uh, Star City as well at some point. But it's a franchise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. probably. Um, in fact, I think I joked because it was the same set. It was the same cheap. set. Yeah, 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 yeah it, was it was identical. It was, it was, yeah, it was a thing. Um, that was a whole critique one episode. So Tony Todd's in this episode actually. Tony Todd's the uh, the kind of the villain. Uh, well, he's, he's not an outright villain per se. He's kind of a more of a a mixed sort of grey area kind of character. He's got he's got he's kind of a tragic person. Um, okay, I think the first thing we have to talk about this. So this is the first time we've done Smallville since some news happened about a month or so ago. Yeah, we should we should mention it. We should address it because, and the reason why I think we should address it is because last time we did one of these. We had been cracking jokes about this, given what we knew about it at the time. Because at the time, all we knew is that Alison Mack was in a sex cult. And that was just kind of funny, because it was, oh, she's kind of kinky, whatever. No big deal, right? Just kind of funny. It's not, it's not the sort of thing you hear about someone. Since then, though, however, we have gotten news of what actually happened in that. It wasn't just a, like a sex cult. It wasn't just like a sex club. It was like full-on sex trafficking. And Alison Mack was like the the second in command and was also branding her initials into the genitalia of sex slaves. It's not funny anymore. It's like outright heinous. She's a piece of shit. So no more jokes about that, yeah. basically is what I'm saying. Um, I mean I I guess we should cover ourselves by saying allegedly. I mean yeah sure. Just for but... now. I mean I know she's been arrested, but she hasn't been tried yet. So I mean, ju- just until it's alleged. That, that feels just like a. I don't know. Just have to cover cover ourselves in case anything comes back. I, I, I ain't being the, the the blame of this. She 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 has been arrested on those charges. Um, it's looking pretty lately though that everything it, is it, true. It is. It is. I'm not disputing that. I mean, seeing photos of the initials on pe- people's bodies is pretty good evidence. It is, it is. I, I agree. Anyway, um, so the one thing that came up in this episode, though, that made me think of it at one point, is at one point she says to, I think it's Clark, um, and they're talk, I think they're talking about Tony Todd's character, and she says something along the lines of, oh, you can never know what sort of deep, dark secret someone's got, Clark, or something like that, and I'm like, oh, God. Yeah, no, it, it, it was, it was, um... It was after Clark says, oh, no, he used to work on the farm and, mm. you know, and, you know, all this stuff. And she goes, oh, just because you work with someone you know, all, all day doesn't mean you actually know them. Yeah, I was, uh, and I like, cringed. Oh. I went, oh, God, that line coming from her. I'm like, no. Uh, um, yeah. So, eek, eek. Uh, but, yeah, so luckily she's not a big part of this episode. We can mostly ignore her. Uh, I mean, our dad's a bigger part of the episode, actually, because the school's on a field trip. They they're, went to the, the, the processing plant the Lex Corp, or the, the Luther Corp, I should say, in this show. Processing plant. Um, so, you know, and he's, our dad works there. He's the one he's giving the tour. manager. He cracks some good jokes, though. I'll give him that. Proper dad jokes. Proper dad jokes. Um, and everybody else is enjoying it. Uh, Chloe's just uh, being embarrassed, uh, being all selfish. But anyway, so Martha and Jonathan have went to Metropolis. It's an anniversary, so they're going for a, a romantic weekend. And Clark wants a small get-together just so we can ask Lana to come. That, that's that's the whole reason. Yeah, yeah, right. um, cut to the, the house is full of teenagers, most of whom he doesn't even recognise uh, is the gag. And Lana shows up and even she's like, I don't even know half these people, this is weird. Um, I love that when, when the dude's going to puke, the clock super speeds across to get like a, a ball for him to throw up in. Mm-hmm. He's like, nah, he's so drunk, he's not going to notice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the the Clark Lana thing is just like I mean, there's not too much of it this episode. Thankfully, it's not really it's a not, focus. It's not really that bad here. Um, but you know, is that that was like, oh, so you come solo tonight? And like, just say, just ask where Whitney is. Like, just no, but to, to be fair, she kind of calls him on that shit immediately. She's like, oh, you mean where's Whitney? Well, yeah, but that's kind of my thing. Is that the whole thing is awkward? Like, I just didn't like any part of it. 
No, I I appreciate that she <laughs> she calls him on it though, rather uh... than rather than going with his bullshit. For me, that's just like another step of the the awkward drama that I don't want. Is the oh the... no, it's not good, but at least yeah. it, you know it, it tracks rather than her pretending to go along with it. Yeah, and then she's fighting with Whitney, but that seems to just get put by the side though, because when they find Tony Todd shaking, he's 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 got like like super Parkinson's basically, and he's he's making everything shake. It's a really um, aggressive effect that they use. It is, because uh, he accidentally kills like his his coworker from uh, Luther Corp. He, he he shakes him to death. He shakes him to death. Um, I mean, <laughs> anyway, so you have you have that and he, he comes to Clark Clark takes him to the hospital parents show up not happy about the house even though Clark super speeds around cleaning it up yeah I mean who cares it's all clean yeah well I think they're upset that they phoned their own house and got six different people <laughs> in one night yeah yeah. none of whom even help. knew who Clark was <laughs> yeah that yeah, probably didn't help I, I, th- I think that's why they're upset uh, was this the first episode I would say the first one was it that we've had John Glover or did we have him in one since the pilot uh, I'm not sure actually. I may, I may had one. May had one where he came by to. No, because yeah, like, yeah. he sent like a, like a lawyer or someone to like check on Lex. It wasn't him. Yeah, maybe maybe he's had like one scene with Lex. Yeah, I just made sure. I was like, oh, John Glover. Is this the first time I've had him? I said, no, he was in the pilot for sure. But um, yeah. I, I was uh, trying to remember since then. I'm not gonna lie. He speaks a lot of sense here when he shows up. So he shows up at the plant, you know, mm. you know the, 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 all the kids have been taken hostage. And... Yeah, because Tony Todd's t- taking them hostage. Yeah. He's yeah. demanding that he wants uh, someone from Access Luther Corp to, to show yeah, he... to level three, the, the secret hidden part of the building that made him sick. Yeah. And, you know, so he shows up and, and the, 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 the Kents are like, right, what are you going to do? How are you going to get the kids out? And he goes, I'm going to let SWAT do their job. They'll wait for him to make a mistake and they can move in. And, and, they, and they're like, oh, but our kids are in there. And I'm like, yeah, what do you want him to do? I mean, SWAT do their job. That's kind of the point uh, of this. Up until now, yeah, no, he's, he sounds fine. It's more, it's more as it goes on, other things start to like seep oh, through. sure, later on. But that, immediately when he shows up, they're jumping on him going, you, you, this is your fault, you've got to do this. I'm like, and he's, I, I think, I, a personally rational response to say, oh, no, I, th- no, I, I, I think all the characters in this scene play out exactly how they should. The parents are a lot, are terrified, so they're they're making demands, even though they're not necessarily logical. I I, I buy that they shouldn't be making sound logical. Fair enough. I think they're a little bit accusationary because it's Lionel Luther. Yeah, but I mean, to be fair, I mean they're not wrong. To be yeah, jo- Jonathan's got a history with Lionel. We know this. Yeah, <laughs> so you know, again, it plays to the characters. I don't want to defend the show too much, but the, the, all the characters in this scene track for me, including Lex. Everyone's opinion on the matter. Fair works enough. out for me but then lex wants to play the hero and he goes in to talk to him um lionel wants not no part of it uh and clark can't actually go near him as well because at one point whitney's like hey clark we can take him together right and uh, but we've seen that because whatever they were using on these crops to make them grow faster involved kryptonite so now clark reacts to him as if he's kryptonite so we get the so and i'm still counting this as the kryptonite every episode i mean it's the same thing. Yeah, it's it's a little more actually in baked into the plot on this one. The it's, green this, veins this in his hand forgivable. are popping out, so it counts. No, no, that's fair, but it's <laughs> it's forgivable in this episode. You know, compared to some of the others, where well, it's no, just, oh, here's thing. a rock. The problem, the problem is not that it's not justifiable in every episode it's in. The problem is it doesn't matter how justifiable it is. What is every freaking episode? I don't care how justifiable it is in this one. No, no, I, I'm with you in general. I'm just saying, you know, in context, if you look at all the episodes and you go, all right, okay, I'll allow it in five of them, this would be one I'd allow it in because it's like you you kind of need it for the plot to work. Okay, okay. So, so yeah, so Clark goes and finds this place because he wants to help him, even though Tony Todd's putting everyone in danger, he still wants to help him. Uh, we get this kind of standoff in a walkway where they finally get to level three. and It's all empty now. Uh, which Lionel uses later to the press. He's like, oh, I think you're referring to an empty storage, uh, you know, room yeah, or basement. Yeah, st- still not any bl- on any blueprints, though, is it? No, no, very suspicious. Um, and of course, I like the Lex kind of like f- in front of the press says, "Yeah, so that's why we're going to fund these medical bills." And you know, Lionel's just like, "What?" <laughs> yeah, it's like because we're a family business, aren't we, Dad? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I do love when when Lex asks Lionel, "It's like, hey, you, you told me there wasn't a, a, a three. He's like, no, I said there, were, there wasn't any level three on the plans." Plausible deniability. 
just mm. outright says that too. which is actually wrong if you go back i remember the dialogue from the scene he said that he didn't say that it, the scene where he asked him he says i, I told him there's no level three uh is that right dad he says of course it is yeah fair enough so the, he, he's actually bullshit and the, the actual dialogue from the scene didn't say it that way uh, i mean yeah, he, he is a a serial bullshit so mm, mm. so you know that's the thing i mean it ends with uh you know Leno's hugging Lex, but it's, it's for the cameras. It's very phony and cold. And Lex is looking over at Clark with his parents, and they're all loving him. And he's like, he's just jealous. He's like, oh, I want that life. Yeah. Uh, my dad's yeah. a bastard. Uh, cut the credits. It's a really <laughs> abrupt ending compared to most episodes. Which honestly makes it the best ending of any of the episodes. I feel this is the one that. I mean, I'm hesitant to say this, but I actually think it might be the best episode of the show so far. Because the dramatic point it's making at the end actually felt like it was making a point. No, it's true, and there, there was no sappy epilogue scene with a with a pop with a really light pop song playing. Yes, over it, it. it was. It made its point. Lex looked over. You can tell he's like you know envious, jealous, whatever whatever word you want to use. How how strong he feels at this point. But it's this bittersweet yeah. thing, and it just cuts. It just cuts on the emotion, and you feel it. Um, it's still not a good episode of TV, I don't think. It's, still... it's not, but uh, as I've said, whenever I've defended parts of this show in the past, Lex has always been the best part of the show. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I think, you know, that that's why this lands, is because, oh no, we're playing with... The, the Lex stuff rings true. All of it makes... It really makes sense in, in the way he feels. And I like that, you know, it's not just a case of killing Tony Todd at the end. It's, no, no, we're going to try and get him help. He's not, he's not dead. Yeah. Yeah, and again, so I like that Lex different, is, you know, th- this this is an episode where you could say Lex's heart is in the right place. Yeah, yeah. Like, sure, he's got ulterior motives in some way, you know, he wants to find out the truth for himself as well. But ultimately, he's like, no, he, he goes in there, he, he kind of, because he, he, he goes in there, he's like, hey, all right, let all the kids go, I'll show you level three. Mm. And as soon as they go, he's like, right, where's level three then? Oh, it's in your head, you crazy bastard. <laughs> Uh, I also, although I will point out here though, is that after like Clark like pulls them up and the, you know the the, the the railings fell down and they're in the walkway and he's pulled yeah. both of them up and it's like two people you know it's, it's you know Lex is holding on to Tony yeah. Todd. Tony Todd's not a small guy. No, Tony Todd's a big dude. And yeah. He pulls both of them up. So, and this is like no, like you'd have to be like a a pretty strong guy just in terms of regular human beings to pull this off. But he does it, and it looks like he struggles because of the kryptonite. He's, he's struggling through the pain, so it looks kind of yeah. believable in that sense. But immediately, Lex is like, "How did you pull us up, Clark?" Like it's like he forgets everything he was thinking about. He just like goes, "Clark, you know, I'm very interested. How did you pull us up?" Because he still gets, he's like, "How did he save me in the car that day?" There's something going I can't on here. Blame him though. It, you know, that happens. You're immediately back to thinking about these other thoughts you've had, right? I think a glance would have done it for me. Him, him actually stepping in all like, "How did you do that, Clark?" I brought up. <laughs> okay, no, I, I, I agree. It overdoes it, but I think Lex should be thinking of it. Yeah, no. no, no. No. And, you know, Clark plays Officer Adrenaline, which again, just about plausible enough you could get away with it. Just about. Just about. <laughs> I think that's the key thing between their relationship. Uh-huh. It's just about. Oh dear. So, I mean, I guess it's the best one because some of the dramatic points do land for me. Um, barely any line. Yeah, but it's, it's still not good. I mean, the, the, the shaking effect is pretty bad. Yeah. Um... But hey, it doesn't focus on some of the stuff that really drags the show down usually. So I mean, I guess it's, in that it's a pretty sense, watchable episode of TV. I guess it's a win in that sense. And John Glover's I think, there. I mean, he's also a good actor. So whenever he's around, it tends to. And there's there's barely you know you know uh, we we you can often play count the pop songs. I think the only ones might be during the party scene, which you know, it's a pretty pretty excusable place to have pop songs. Mm, yeah, I I I, I give him that one. They spent all the money in Tony Todd this episode. They couldn't afford any pop songs. <laughs> I kid, he's not an expensive actor. Yeah, he's, he does a lot of low budget stuff, but still. Um, all right, okay. I guess that's I guess that's small bill. We did it. Yeah. <laughs>